Pennies Going In Raw is a production of iHeartRadio. The opinions expressed in the following podcast are for general informational purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide education and entertainment about the financial industry and the stock market. Enjoy. On this episode of Pennies Going In Raw, we go over question and answers and also the big stocks affecting SPY. You find out life's this game of pennies. Oh, you guys know we only have a 40% runner. Hello, 40% is a fucking killing. We've been compliant for too long. It's time we go to war. I don't have a Roth. You know so much about the market that his brain doesn't have enough room for grammar. Hey, who told me about Idex? It's going up a shit ton now. We're up 4%, baby. No way. Four fucking percent. You asked the exact same question with two words <laughs> different. It's like, fuck, man, I just got dick whipped for like 20%. And now that f***er's up like 50. I bet Warren Buffett never did that. I'm just making this voice memo to call out unusual whales to a fight. The pennies we need are everywhere around us. Pennies. 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 Going in raw. Featuring Dan. Deity it dips. And Hugh Honey. Produced by Vinny. And Christian. Let's, Let's go, go, baby. Welcome back to another episode of Pennies Going In Raw. Today is Sunday, February the 6th, and SPY is still in this crazy chop fest. I mean, you're seeing it up, down, up, down. This week, we finally saw it really start to heat back up again and get back to those 458s. Not much of a downtrend, but then to end the week, we kind of went all the way back to below 450. Uh, Finally, looked like everything was going well, but people said, hey... You know, towards the end of the week, maybe we don't want to hold this over the weekend. What do you kind of think about, you know, it, it's the talk of the town here is, right now is just what Spy is doing. I mean, it's you don't really ever see it move in this crazy of a range. Yeah. Uh, so we came back down on Friday and we tested 444 twice and we held twice. And then we saw at the end of the day action. Uh, we tested 452. I personally wanted us to not close at high a day. Uh, I wanted us to close uh, below high a day above 450. We ended up closing the day at 448. 70, um, which I'm super bullish. I think we talked about it on, uh, on what was that Wednesday's episode where we said that I believe that we're going to kind of stair step range. And I still believe that that's going to happen. And I think what we're seeing right now is the first level of that. So I, I truly believe that, uh, 450 to 452 will become the next uh, I'll call it the bottom of this, of the stair step. And then, uh, maybe like 458, 457 will become that next range. And we'll just be inside like, kind of like a volatility, you know, really just a, just a constant, you know, ping pong between there until we break out up again. And then I think it'll be, you know, again, the 460 to like 475 or maybe like 468, something like that. And I truly believe that that's, what's going to happen. And then I believe that once we break all time highs that like I, I keep saying, and I continue to say, I do believe that we see all time highs some, uh, uh, somewhere in March. Um, and definitely by June. That's, that's my feeling. I'm going to stick with it. And, uh, and, and I do believe, but today I will be honest, I had spy calls on Friday and, uh, I bought them on a dip and that 444 test scared the shit out of me. And at the end of the day, I said that, you know, if it closes below there, I, I mean, on like the 15 minute chart that I would have closed them out. And, uh, and even though it didn't technically close under there, uh, it still scared the hell out of me. Uh, I was oversized. So I was over emotional, which, uh, which is my problem, you know, and at the end of the day, it did what I thought it would do, but you know, that doesn't matter if I, if I get scared and oversized and sell like a bitch. So I think one of the big things that people are noticing now is how much, you know, these big moves on spy are kind of following the Amazons, the apples that whenever they have their earnings reports or call, everyone's looking forward to like a forward split and, you know, the control F the algos are looking for it stuff like that. And you're seeing it really affect spy. What should kind of like the average trader know about how these bigger stocks affect the market as a whole? 
Yeah. So especially when we're talking about SPY or like an index, for anyone that doesn't know, indexes are made of individual stocks. Uh, or I shouldn't say they're not just made of individual stocks, but let's take the S&P 500. It's the 500 largest companies. And so the weights, one thing that a lot of people get confused on is that it's not equally weighted. Okay, that that is a little key key factor there. That's not equally weighted. So, uh, so when we have earnings, let's call it, or a catalyst, th- that individual stock that's heavily weighted can move the entire index. So, for instance, we just went through tech earnings reports, and uh, we just went through mo- most tech earnings reports, at least the big guys, you know, your Facebook, your Apple, um, your Amazon, and so. That is going to move the index, which is what we saw. Now, I tweeted this on Thursday, and I said, it feels like growth was sacrificed so that the 500 largest companies, the S&P 500, could move like a penny stock. And that is truly how it feels. I mean, even on Friday, Peloton made a 20% move off of an article uh, about Amazon may may be looking to buy them or, or that there's rumored news. I didn't get to look at it, but uh but it really didn't seem like it was any like any of the news headlines didn't come out with like credible source or anything like that. It just seems like an article said that Apple or Amazon might buy Peloton and boom, immediately up 20%. I mean Amazon up what was it? 15% after hours. And when you break down the earnings reports, Amazon's great, I'll call it great earnings reports, comes from mostly Rivian. $11 billion of their net income came from Rivian in it's, Q4. It's, it's pronounced uh, revenue, dude. I'm fucking with you. Oh, 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 oh. I thought, I thought it was <laughs> And so, and so that's the thing is that, and then Rivian's been cut in half since then. So it's like, how the hell are they allowed to include that shit on their earnings reports when it's been cut in half? But they are because they make the rules, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. But my point is, is that you're seeing all these big moves. Facebook down 25%. That's wild. They shaved 200 million off their market cap. Kind of like, uh, and it reminded me of kind of what we saw in Wish, that earnings report, whenever it was like a 15 and dropped to 10, of just saying their future guidance isn't good. Saying like, hey, the future, we don't have much, you know? And it reminded me like exactly yeah. what we saw there. Yeah, Obviously, exactly. I don't that, expect yeah, it to drop 80%, <laughs> but... That was, and then they then they spent. I think it was ten billion on uh, the Facebook spent ten billion on their metaverse or something. Uh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that that's a lot of money, and it doesn't really. It's f- not a little bit. No, no, and and it kind of feels like if you spend ten billion now, and maybe maybe I'm totally wrong for this, but if I had spent ten billion and I'm a public company. I'm probably going to warn my investors to like, hey, we spend a lot of money, but good things are coming. It didn't feel like that at all. It felt like, yo, we spend $10 billion and we really don't have much to show for it. Like that, that's, that's what I kind of perceived from Facebook, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. Also, the Do, do you kind of think maybe because the future guidance may be looking into more soon more stuff that's more soon than what you could expect with the metaverse obviously we're still so early with the metaverse and you know and obviously the metaverse isn't just a facebook thing but they are one of the first really quick adapters with the oculus and everything else yeah and and so about the metaverse because i was thinking this over I was thinking this over. Listen, this is clear. Facebook's clearly making an investment in innovation play, for yeah. the future. Yeah. So if you're if you want to buy any like let's call it, let's let's say you want to buy close to two hundred. I mean, you're either gonna look like a genius, or we'll be looking back like, hey, this was a dumpster fire rolling quickly down a hill, and they were just spending tons of money to make it work. I personally would have wanted. Facebook to come out. You know how Mark uh, Zuckerberg was, you know, kind of trying to ease like the employees and stuff on like that web call like the next day. Ever since I saw the picture of him like with the, all the sunscreen on his face, he's not easing me into shit, dude. 
<laughs> well, so, so the thing is that I would have liked if he took the perspective that um, Bezos took in, I think it was 01 or 2000 when Facebook, or I always talk about this, but Facebook dropped from $108 a share to like Amazon. 19 or I mean, sorry, Facebook. Yeah. Amazon. Sorry. Tough week over here. Uh, I would have liked, and, and it, the words that Bezos said was, Hey, listen, if you're looking for quick money, this isn't the place like we're building something special, but it's going to take time. Hey, dude, in, two, in 2001, there weren't all these retail investors that would cause all these retail investors today to shit a brick. Yeah, you would see, yeah, yeah. You would see, game. You would see Mark Zuckerberg's net worth split in half in a matter of yeah. two trading hours. But I think I think releasing the earnings and and I think releasing the earnings reports that shitty and then giving terrible guidance and like not really preparing anybody. Like I understand that you don't know the earnings reports until until uh, until I, obviously everybody else knows it. Like the like the company doesn't get them first. Um, but if you spend ten billion, like that's my issue. My issue is that you made a ten billion dollar investment. And that effectively got flushed down the toilet. Or if it didn't get flushed down the toilet, at least give me something. You know, like it's like it's not like you spent. Like, okay, so they shaved two hundred billion off their market cap. They spent ten billion. So like that's not a super small number uh, comparatively to what they lost inside the market cap. So I would have liked like you know something. You know, I uh, screw the active users Ease on the Facebook. Nerves. Yeah. He's a nerve. Okay, the active users on Facebook have been have been declining for like everybody everybody knows that Facebook's a declining platform. Okay? Like the platform itself. So if you really want to make this investment, at least give me a little something. Like this is like m my future wife going to buy like $2,000 shoes or something and like me not getting anything out of it. Like tell me it's for our anniversary or something. You know, like don't just go buy two thousand dollars shoes and me and it pop up on my phone because then I'll be pissed because I ain't got nothing to show for it and you overspent for it. But if it's like, hey, honey, like you know, it's for our anniversary. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna wear a nice little dress. Like then I'm like, all right, fuck, like, all right, this is an investment for me. Uh, I don't know. Facebook just kind of felt think like, about it, yeah, yeah, like this is ten billion for like someone else. You know, I don't know. That was me. That's how I read it. It'll be really interesting. I almost bought some shares the other day for a long-term hold, but, uh, I've been going down this volatility rabbit hole and I think the market's fucked. Like I like the market should be like the market at fair value is probably worth like 90% down from here. But, uh, but that's, that's for another day. I've been going down this volatility rabbit hole and about, uh, the whole, it's just wild. It's just wild. Like the market, the market is not at fair value even before COVID and certainly not now. You know, with all the tech news coming out, the catalyst, the earnings report, et cetera, et cetera, for next round, or let's say the next sector that has all of theirs come out, what do you think is the best way to kind of play them? You know, obviously with a bunch of the bigger ones, you just wait. If there's a forward split, you know, buy, buy, buy. I mean, you saw it a few times in the past couple of years with a couple of bigger ones like Apple and Tesla. But I mean, what what other ways can you really like look to really make money off of them? I'll take the option side and the common side. A lot of people like to play options and earnings. If you saw with Amazon, the premiums were disgusting, like disgusting. If you had bought, so Amazon was down, I think 6% um, the, on Thursday, the day that they released earnings. If you had bought calls the day before, for Amazon, you were actually green going into earnings because the premiums were so jacked. Like that's wild to me. And when I last looked, I think it was like the average option player for the next two months needed, or I mean the next two weeks needed a 9% move <laughs> in the market. I'm talking about calls and puts need a 9% move to break even. That is in pretty insane.
insane. I mean, it's especially we're not talking about some penny stock. We're talking about multi-billion dollar companies, trillion dollar companies. I mean, this that's wild to me. Uh, and so I, I was actually talking to someone about it and I said, either everybody knew that, that Amazon was going to knock it out of the park or there's just tons of fucking gamblers right now. And, uh, and if there's tons of gamblers in the market, and obviously, you know, we, we always have gamblers in the market, but this kind of felt like, like everybody was doing a hail Mary. And so when we talked earlier in the year about a big washout, those are the types of situations where like, you're down 70, 80% of your account and you're like, fuck it. Like I'm going to put it like, I'm going to put it Wall on Street black. Best style, YOLO. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to yell all this on Amazon. It's fucking it, Amazon and I'm going to do it. And, uh, and so my perspective was that things are getting real tough. Uh, the volatility is really making people desperate and it might not even necessarily be that everybody's getting smoked in the market, but if people are used to doing 10% on their account a week and then all of a sudden they've only made 3% and we're inside the second month, it could be where like emotions start to unravel a little bit. And you know, you start to take bigger bets on things because you want to make that progress. So if that is you stop, it never, ever ends. Well, the market will always be here. You will have tons of time to compound your, your gains, but don't start taking over. Like I, like I'll be honest. Uh, I was, I had a pretty big loss on Thursday. And so Friday I was like, you know what? Like I'm, I feel confident about this move. And, and I was confident about the move. I was like, listen, it comes back down and tests, uh, like 445, 444. I'm going to buy calls and I'm going to hold them, you know, for banker bankrupt three weeks out. And I oversized because I wanted to make back what I lost on Thursday. And because of that, I got smoked and I ended up selling at the very bottom. Like we talked about at the beginning of the episode. So if you're the type of person where like, you kind of like, you're not making the biggest progress. So now it's kind of one of those things where, yeah, you're just kind of, it kind of feels like you're gambling now. Stop. And just kind of relax. Honestly, take out 50% of your account and just trade with what you have so that at least you have that. Taxes buffer. are coming up anyways. Taxes are coming up. It's not fun. Um, what do you kind of think about the, the traders that instead of just trying to make it through this, they just, you know, hey, I made a good bit last year and the cut last year before. I'm going to just, I'm going to just chill. I'm going to wait this out until it gets hot again. Do you think that's like unwillingness to learn or do you think that's kind of being safe? Both. I, I think, I think even for myself, the last 16 months was like so easy that it's like, we all have to like relearn everything, you know? Yeah. That's kind of how I feel. I, I think it's both. It's like Kevin Durant transferring to the Warriors. And then if he was like, nah, never mind, I'm a fuck. I'm not playing anymore. I got my rings. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's kind of how it feels. All right. Well, you want to get to some, uh, you have some Q and A's in your DMS. Uh, you want me to kick us off with one? Yeah. Yeah. Kick us off. All righty. Um, Hey Dan and Hugh, love the podcast and not going to lie. Loving this market pullback. As you guys always say, this will create a lot of opportunity as a newer trader. I'm coming into a decent sum of money and don't want to piss it all away learning, but I find no emotion by paper trading. I was wondering if you would be willing to touch on a few strategies on a future podcast. Thanks for all you guys do for the community. Keep up the great work. This is Investor Still Own. I like the name. Dope ass name. Uh, but I mean, like we always say, you can do a smaller size. But again, if you're not feeling emotion with paper trading, you're not going to feel emotion with 10 shares either. So I think that's a, it's a fair question. And there's really not a lot of ways except for playing what you know and just playing safe and trying to trying to just make sure like like I said earlier with the is it unwillingness to learn if you're just not trading but you want to keep learning so I think that's a good point like how how can we go about and get this like without losing too much but still involving emotion yeah so the one thing that I always feel it's super important to do is that even though I don't necessarily believe that you have to paper trade. I do believe that it's necessary for you to create a systematic approach to the market. And so I would treat it like a video game. 
We don't play video games because they, well, I should say 99% of people don't play video games because they make us money. We play video games because we fuck with them. We like them. Okay. So similar to the market is that, yeah, you can come in and you can feel that emotion, but if you don't have a successful win rate, the only emotion you're going to be feeling is like, fuck this. Like I shouldn't have done this. It's like sucking at a video game. You don't want to play that game anymore. You don't want to play a video game anymore. So you don't have to paper trade, but I would take the approach of let me find a successful win rate before I put more money into this and use the win rate as that goal to, okay, I don't feel any emotion right now, but let me get the win rate because here's the difference is that if you can get a 90% win rate while paper trading, that win rate is probably cut in a third when you add in emotions. And that's because similar to what happened to me on Thursday or today or Friday, when it came close to my stop, I just decided to get out. And so if I had just followed my plan, I wouldn't have gotten out. But my emotions, because I saw the amount of red made me sell or, or, you know, had a hand in me selling. So I would get that high win rate up, you know, get it 80%, 70%. And then listen, you know, you do you. If you want to feel some emotion, fine, put five grand inside an account. Hell, if you're like a baller and you want to put 25 grand in, do it. But you need to, you can't just come to the market and with 50 grand and just say, I'm going to learn this way. Because I, I promise you that account will be in half before you even know what hit you, especially if you're using margin. One thing that I would do is I would restrict margin or do something so you can't use margin. Um, but yeah, my advice would be to take, take the paper account or take the small share size, you know, five, 10 shares and get the successful win rate, just play around with it. And then listen, you want to feel emotion after you've proven to yourself after a month or two that, uh, that you, you can play this game. Sure. Just deposit 25, 30 grand, do it. Just nothing that you're going to need down the road. That's all I ask. No rent, no emergency fund. Like, like if you're going to deposit 50 grand, you better be making honestly, truthfully, you better be making like 300, 200, grand a year. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I like think another I another thing you can do to kind of do this, still learn, set a very strict minimum amount of or maximum amount of how much you're allowing yourself to lose. And it's kind of like having a cash account where it's like towards the end of the day, you're out of money. You can't trade anymore. If you enjoy trading, you're not going to want to lose because then you you know to yourself, if you're disciplined, I can't trade anymore. I, I love that because that's going to be the, I, trust me, I get that you're like, Hey, I have no emotion. Like I want to come to the market. I, I totally get it. It's just not that simple. <laughs> Even if you came to me and you're like, Hugh, I have a 90% win rate. I'm still going to tell you, start with like a 10th of what you want to start with. If you can take an account from a thousand dollars to $10,000, you can take an account from 10,000 to a hundred thousand. But if you can't take an account, if you take an account from a thousand dollars to 500, you're going to do it with 50 grand. You're going to, you're going to have that thing at 10 grand in like no time. Because, because when you, at least when you have smaller numbers, it's like, you can't even buy that many shares. So sometimes you get locked down and stuff. When you got like 50 grand, holy hell, you can add you that can, dip way too much, way too much. And then all of a sudden you're down, you're down. You're like, t- just trust me, trust me on this. And, uh, and again, when you, when you feel confident that you can come to the market with a successful systematic approach, fine, throw in whatever you want. Just please make it like a 10th of what you make a year so that at the bare minimum, if you lose it all, it's like one month tops. All right. I'm sure you have another question on your end. Uh, I do. So from our boy, Zordon, Q, fellow Jersey boy, I'm done. Di- oh God. I'm dying over here. Literally, I've been getting smoke since Thanksgiving. Yeah, you and a lot of other people, brother. My account has gone from 350000 to to 130000 Um, And then he all, all asked if I offer personal trading services and then says, been doing this a while, but have lost my edge. Not looking to go back to my corporate job. Thanks for taking the time to read this. Um, so I'm going to call you Z. Z, 
First off, the fact that you have $130,000, no matter the age, liquid, is impressive. But clearly something's gone wrong. I don't, I'm going to assume that the 350,000 to 130,000 didn't happen in like two or three moves. You said that this has been happening since Thanksgiving. So I'm going to assume that it's that over the course of around two months. Yeah. Yes. It's been, you know, death by a thousand cuts. So maybe you just come to the market, you lose like a grand every day. That's, that's how I'm perceiving this. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but that's how I'm perceiving this. So if that's true, we need to find out. I'm going to I'm going to also assume that you had less money, like you didn't just come to the market with 350 grand. You said that you've been doing this a while. So, I'm going to assume that you had a strategy that was working for you. Let's we need to go back through our trades and find out what is different. Am I different? Is my strategy different? Or is the market different? My hunch is going to be that you made most of that money following small cap Twitter traders or just small caps in general. Growth has gotten killed. Now, if you're a one strategy kind of flagship guy, that's okay. In fact, I like that because I'm someone who doesn't like to go outside of my lane. I like my three to five strategies. If you are a one strategy horse, that's totally cool. But the difference is, is that you got to know when to take the pedal off. So if you're a small cap trader and specifically a long small cap trader, you've had the easiest 16 months in the world. Okay, specifically for for small cap longs. Now you're seeing a lot of chop. So if you're a day trader, you need to be picking your spots. If you're a day trader, your entries and your exits are the sole difference between being profitable and not being profitable. I'm telling you that right now. I it's going to take work. If you're a small cap trader, uh, what I would do is, is that I would take, you have 130 grand left. I would take 30,000, set it off to the side, actually make it 35,000, set it off to the side. So at least you have that. Okay. Then take that 95,000 that you have. And let's, like I said, you already went back and you looked and you saw what was different. Was it your strategy or what was it? Now your strategy is not broken. It's just not the right market for it. So now we got to figure out something else. If you're trading based on technicals, my guess is that you can bring those technicals over to large caps. Now, the other thing is that large caps usually move a lot. Oh, I'm going to mess this up. A lot smoother, a lot smoother. Large caps usually move a lot smoother. Your Amazon, your apples, you know, they follow the market. So you might even like large caps more. The difference, obviously, is that you're not going to get a 20% move out of Apple, but that's okay. Test out the large caps. Test out, don't try options. Test out seeing how you like using technicals if you're a technical based trader on the large caps. And if you like them and you can do three to four good trades, don't use margin. But that's one of those things where I believe that if you can make $500 a day trading large caps, eventually, you can start to use margin as you scale into that. And that's the way that I would do it. So your, your small cap long strategy isn't dead. It's just not working in this market. So you take your strategy and you use those blueprints for something else. That's similar to like Apple or, you know, trading Apple, Amazon, stuff like that. Just trade the commons. And no, again, you're not going to make 5% of your account a day, but it's one of those things where if you can make 500 bucks a day, that's a lot of money. That's going to keep you from going, from not going back to your corporate job. I'm going to, your corporate job, you're probably made between 400 to $600 a day. So if you can replace that income during the slow periods of small caps, trading large caps, you're going to be right, right. Okay. And then you can move from there to using margin. Now, this is over. I'm talking over months. And then that's where you can go from making, you know, 500 bucks a day to three grand a day. And you might not even like going back to small caps because you might like taking 10,000 shares of, or you might like taking a thousand shares of Tesla and trading that and, uh, and just taking the four or five point move. So that's what I would say. 
Um, if I have this wrong, you know, DM me again and, and I'll answer it from a different perspective, but that's what I would do. Okay. So what if he looks at his strategy and he realizes that he was just following small cap Twitter traders and their calls are working now they're not how worried should he be? And how should he address his issue? If that's the case, one thing is that obviously calls haven't been working. What we saw last year was a lot of algorithms were buying up what a lot of Twitter traders were tweeting. So you would see a tweet and instantly you would see, you know, um, I mean, you would see some of these, some of these, uh, small caps explode or large caps. So if now we're seeing the opposite to where it's not really working like that. So if that's how you made your money, uh, just strictly by following people, congratulations. You kind of hit the lottery. Um, if you truly don't have a strategy, take out 80% of your account, put it inside the bank, consider yourself super lucky to get to this point. And now it's time that you actually learn how to trade. Um, now you got to go through the motions, but the good part is that you got a little bit of, uh, you got a little bit of, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit of a cushion now, but now you're going to take out 80% and you're going to learn how to trade. You're going to learn fundamentals. You're going to learn technicals. You're going to actually put in the time. You're going to zoom out and look at things on the daily chart for resistance breaks. You're going to, you're truly going to learn how to trade. Um, so consider yourself lucky that you made the money that you made just following some random person. Now let's get to work, baby. All right. You want to do one more? Uh, yeah. All right. Last one. Yo, Dan, looking for some advice, man, if you can help. This is from Remy Ripper. I've been working nonstop 24 seven for a while now, and I don't plan on stopping, but the exhaustion is affecting my trading. Do you suggest taking a break? I feel like I can't take a break though. I just have to keep going. Do you think that it'll be healthy and beneficial to do that? Do you have experience with this? Uh, I think taking Wait, a break say the, is... say the first sentence again. <clears throat> He's been working nonstop 24 seven for a while now, and I don't plan on stopping, but the exhaustion is affecting my trading. If, oh, if, wait, wait, wait. Didn't we already answer this one? No. We did... Uh, we answered on the, on the pod, I think. Did we? We told him to take a break. And we told him to... Uh, to oh, yeah, sure. uh, once his trading... Uh, once his trading replaces like half of his income. Oh, shit. Sure, I do not remember quit one this. of his jobs. Uh, I didn't say... When I mean, he said he working 24-7, yeah. I, I thought he meant working towards trading. I didn't know if he meant working oh, okay. jobs. But I mean, if, if no, no, all no. you're doing is trading, I mean, I guess if we answered the other version, might as well just go at this one. If, if it's two jobs, hell yeah. Just work until, I mean, trade until it replaces what? What'd you say? One income or two incomes? Or? Uh, yeah. So, so what I was saying was that uh, work, work two jobs until your daytime job is being replaced by your trading and then just work the nighttime job. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you went, I remember going over that with the bartending and stuff, but let's say it's just due to trading and I'm sure you've had a lot of experience with this. And I know a lot of time exhaustion due to trading is caused due to losing money. Not exactly. Oh, I'm putting in so much work, but it starts to have an effect on your mental just because it doesn't feel good to lose all the time. And then you got to take into account. This is money. One of the most important things in the world. Uh, so yeah, taking a break if is definitely beneficial in that case. If you, if it's the trading thing, take the break. If it's affecting your trading by trading too much, because what's the point of trading if you're losing money because you're over trading, it's the same thing as actual just over trading or revenge trading is don't do it because you're just, you're fucking up. You're just losing for, for what reason? Just to compound the reason you're pissed in the first place. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you hit it right on the head. That's perfectly said, perfectly done. Um, I, I, you know, you gotta enjoy this shit and, and listen, the, the losses and stuff, you know, I mean, they get to you, they get to me, you know, they get to everybody. You'd be a psychopath for them not to get to you. Um, and over time, you know, it gets better, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's like a breakup, you know, like it Does gets, it? <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it never stops hurting. <laughs> and, you about uh, to cry. Now, honestly, maybe I'm thinking about all the losses, you know? Uh, so, but that being said, you know, like your mental health and all that, like that's super important. Um, and like Dan said, is that, is that you don't want to be losing, you know, like that's no fun. And then the other thing is that, uh, is that if it's truly affecting you that much, then you probably are losing too much money, which means that you're risking too much. 
Um, like everybody has losses. Like we talk about, we talk about a 60% win rate is pretty fantastic. So if, if you're hitting that like 60% win rate and you know, still the losses are like killing you mentally or like, you know, exhausting you, you're risking too much. You, you, I, that's just flat out. You're risking too much. You, you're not, you, 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 you went, you literally pad jumped from one to eight and skipped, you know, two through seven and you got to go back and you gotta, you gotta have those $400 days. You gotta have the $200 days. You gotta have the $50 days. You gotta have the $300 days. You gotta have the $100 days and work yourself up. One thing that Jason Spadafora said, uh, the other night to me, and I'll never forget it. That it's, even though it's only been three nights. Um, he said, I've been living off of $10,000 since 2013, because that's what he started in the market with in 2013. I totally, that resonates with me. Start with a few bucks, work your way up, have the small days so that those small days work up to being bigger days. And then, uh, and then now you're just, then forever you're just trading with profit. Like my, <laughs> my parents got a little pissed because, uh, they also took a loss this week and, uh, and uh, not pissed. They were, they were just like, what the fuck Mitch? And, uh, and I was like, yo, I could, we could lose 80% of where we are from now. And we'd still be up on our initial investment. Like relax homeboys. All right. So that's the way that I would do it. And that's the way that helps me handle the losses. That's all. All right. Well, boys, you've heard it here. Another episode of Pennies Going Them Raw. Hit us with the questions. We'll try and get back to answering some cues. And uh, we'll see you guys all on Wednesday. Bye. Pennies Going In Raw is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.